like like when, when we first got the chickens, the first couple eggs that we had, I like I, I was kind of hesitant to eat them because you still have it in your head that these are chickens. You it, it fell out of their butt, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but 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 now I mean, if I have one of you know Dolce's eggs sitting on the counter, and then we've got the stamped factory farm egg, it's almost like there, there's a gag reflex that you don't want to yeah. eat the factory farm egg because it's just. We eat them as a last resort. You don't even yeah. know where it's been. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't know where it's been. You, you don't know what it was washed in. You don't know what has gotten through the egg because it's a, it's a permeable shell. You don't know what, the, well, you know what that chicken was eating and how it was living, so you don't want to eat the egg. When buying all this the meat and eggs at a store, I feel bad because, you know, I don't want to support that kind of, that kind of industry. But where we live, like where we live in the, the middle of the city, we don't have, we, we have a little bit of choice, but we're, when it comes down to it, we really don't have that much control over everything. The thing is, chickens that make fairly good pets. They do. Yeah, they're they're, they're very cuddly. They actually we, we when you get them at an early age and you, you, yeah. you raise them yourself, to, well, like look at Buttercup. She's yeah, she, um, loves, she loves to cuddle. Yeah, she'll she'll fall asleep in your lap. We we actually went to go visit our chickens today um, because we've had to foster them out since we got our our bylaw citation. Um, and uh, we, we haven't seen them in about a week, and we, we went out there and called them, and Dolce just came running right over and ran right up to the back porch. She just wanted treats. <laughs> she, 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 she missed me. But no, they, they, they come when they're called. If, if you're gardening, they like to sit right beside you and pick out all the bugs that are in your dirt. Can you take them to a local vet if there is? Yeah, someone sit? just said. There, 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 there is one chicken vet. I think his name is Richard Barnett. Um, but, uh, I mean, really, chickens... They're, they're, they're not delicate animals. You know, it, like, like anyone who says that chickens don't fit in well with people, they've been domesticated for 10,000 years. If they didn't fit in with people or if they were a health hazard, they wouldn't have been kept for 10,000 years. The other years. thing is, is that... They're very easy to take care of. Chickens are traditionally raised on farms. We've got thousands of them. And farmers um, throughout the years have developed there's so many home solid remedies. ways, home remedies, because mm -hmm. you're not, if you've got a thousand chickens, you're not going to take every chicken to a vet whenever they right. get sick. Right. You have to be able to treat that issue with all of them. Mm -hmm. And there's a, um, if we have any issues with our chickens, we've had a couple, we go online, we look up the remedies, and it's so much cheaper than, than mm -hmm. taking care of a dog or cat. Like our, our chickens, they had, uh, gape, was it gape worm? Gape worm, yeah. They, they actually picked it up um, from the soil because it would have been from a wild bird population, and the wild birds would have um, pooped out the eggs, and then they ended up eating them somewhere on the They're scratching around the under the tree and things. But we, we um, there's a couple things that we did, just certain spices, um, things yeah. like that. Like twenty five cents to fix them. Like yeah. it's it's really cheap. There's a lot of home remedies. Um, if I get like if you the bird breaks its leg, then yeah, you're gonna bring it to a vet. But in terms yeah. of um, the chickens are just tough. small small yeah. things like that, there's a lot of home remedies. It's really cheap to take care of. Yeah. For um, for example, um, we we feed our chickens uh, grower feed because layer feed it's um, it's enriched with calcium and it's more expensive. So we take their old eggshells and we put them in a coffee grinder and then we add it back into their feed. So it just enriches right. it and it's cheaper. Um, so you don't even need to go ahead and we take their eggshells and we just put it on the back right. porch and they'll, and they'll peck at their own eggshells and they'll mm -hmm. eat them. Yeah. That's so to, weird, to, it, it kind of recycles all the calcium though. It's, yeah. it's really interesting. And uh, we, we add uh, three tablespoons of cayenne pepper uh, per, per one gallon of feed and that naturally deworms them so that they don't get um, intestinal parasites of any kind, which they would pick up from pigeons. Um, and uh, we, we also add just a little bit of apple cider vinegar to their water every day, and uh, that, that just helps to clean out their systems and keep them healthy so they don't get like a cold or any sort of respiratory. Just a little pre preventative thing yeah. just keeps them healthy very all the cheap. time. Mm -hmm. So you, how long did you have chickens here for? Uh, we've had them since August, so gosh, what's it been? Four months, I think? Roughly. I mean, we, we, we asked our neighbors on both sides before we got the chickens, and they were they, they said, yeah, for sure. I mean, it sounds interesting. They, they have children. Everyone in the neighborhood has children, and we yeah. don't have a fence in the back. So after school, they all ride their bikes. They come over. They feed them. They pet them. They chase them around. They cuddle them. They ruffle their feathers, and um, they, they all bring their friends from school because they're like, my, my neighbor has chickens. My neighbor really has chickens. You have to see them. You know, because kids have never seen the kids them. Love they, them. Yeah. yeah, they don't know. They don't see them. Yeah, and the chickens would just stay in our yard, and they're they're very tolerant of kids running around and picking them up. And yeah, I've seen your coop back here. How much space really do two or three chickens take? The coop is like three by four feet, and then the the run itself might be like twelve feet. It, it it's pretty big, okay. but but like 
realistically, chickens need about two square feet per chicken for sleeping space inside a coop. Uh, and then for the run um, outside, they need about four square feet. We give them a lot more than that if I'm yeah. home, they have the whole backyard because, you know, more is better. They have more exercise. Um, it's more And they're turning your for soil for you. Exactly. Well, our soil turned from clay to, to actually yeah. nice yeah. rich soil. Very hard soil here. So. It's, yeah. it's awful here, but, but we they, they the chicken food. Well, yeah. think about it. They're out there for eight hours straight digging. Yeah. They, they, they turn all of it. It's they great. turn leaves right. like into like a powdered leaf mulch and it just yeah. gets... Yeah, because right they scratch the, the leaves, they peck at the leaves, they, yeah. they just... Like we, we put a pile of leaves in their run that probably about six, eight inches thick of leaves and they turned it all into mulch. They, they just yeah, disappeared. Really you, in like a week. If you kept compost, yeah. your chickens would... Uh, Activate your compost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for oh, yeah. sure. Yeah, they, they, they've even helped us landscape. We're, we're working on landscaping. We have this big mound of mulch in the back. And I mean, moving mulch is a pain because it is heavy and it's it's awkward to, to move we it. We tossed the chickens back there and they evened it all up. Yeah, oh. they nice. the whole thing in like a couple of weeks. That's and we, we went out there and we're like, wow, <sighs> okay. <laughs> That's yeah, save, save us time. And they had fun and they, they picked all, all the little centipedes and all the bugs and stuff out of it. So yeah, it's better. It's better for, for for our plants, and it's good for the birds. It's good for our eggs. And you built your own coop and run. Yep. And how much did that cost you in supplies? Well, when when we moved in, I backed over our fence with the U-Haul, so I used all the wood from that. I reused the nails from I that as well. I think most people would recycle wood. So yeah, we. Yeah. I think it, our it, total like, cost was like fifty dollars. Yeah. And that was for all the. Hard, I lucked out and got the hardware at Canadian Tire. There's like twenty five cents for the door latches and the hinges right. and everything. So I got lucky with a lot of this stuff, but the chicken wire was the most expensive part, and that's it. It was yeah. like $25 for the chicken wire. Yeah, and, and that, that was enough chicken wire to do underneath the soil, and then along the sides, and then to completely cover the top, um, and to do over the um, the air holes and stuff. And then we, we bought um, the kind of like louvered vents that you put into a floor um, at the Habitat for Humanity Restore. I think they were like 10 cents each. Right. And then we got a $10 pack of shingles from the restore, and we got free paint from the dump. Yeah. So we built it on a budget, and I mean it's very very sturdy. It's about the size of of a doghouse, and that's it. There's a lot of things that you can turn into chicken coops, kids' yeah, sure. play They're houses. They're not picking. No. No. Well, as long as they have a place that's out of the wind, and that's yeah. yeah the, basically, as long as it's out of the wind and it's it's like secure to keep them away from predators. So yeah, if if you had like a very large plastic dog kennel like the one that we put on the site, um, and you were to insulate it by um, packing um, like like straw bales around it for the winter. They would be just fine because there's 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 no drafts and it has a locking door. That's all they need. Yeah, I think one thing people are surprised at is how little space chickens take. Yeah. People are expecting a big shed or something. Yes, we we've heard that before. People come over and they see the coop and they go, "Wow, I thought you'd at least have like a like a little shed for them or something." And we say, "No, they they don't the, need space." The only space they need is to go to go up there and sleep. That's it. If it, if it's too big, they're just gonna get cold in the winter. They need I used to have sleep. rabbits, and it's really not much bigger than. My rabbit cages. Yeah. Yeah. Now our, ours is like it's a little bit higher because they they like to roost off the ground, mm -hmm. um, but the chickens don't have to. If you don't want to put a roosting pole, then you don't have to. Um, but we, we do because it is it is a natural thing for them to want to be up, even if like it's a few inches off the ground. Just it's like it's, it's like, just cleaner a cleaner for them to sit up yeah. on on a roost rather than sitting on the ground where they poop. So right. So where do you obtain food for your chickens? Uh, there are there are a lot of different places. Uh, one of them, I think it's called Maidstone Farming Limited. Um, that's just out on one of the county roads. Um, we usually go to Essex Feed Warehouse. Um, you can also get um, uh, medical supplies and feed there. They eat all your table scraps as well. Exactly. Everything we put out there, yeah. Yeah. they just devour all of it. Yeah, they'll, so they'll and, if, and if your produce that maybe spoiled or wasn't good yeah. enough for you to eat. Yeah, we, we, we actually go to the, the Windsor Market on Walker and Ottawa and um, there's a few produce vendors and if you walk around with like a, a little cardboard box and just say, hey, do you have any, you know, fruit that might have been dinged up or scuffed or it's not in perfect condition, they, they don't want to sell anything that doesn't look perfect. How much does it cost a year to feed your chickens? about thirty dollars and that's really all there is to upkeep of your chickens too. Yeah, that, that and just buying bedding which is maybe another twenty bucks a year. That's it. For some people, you can use leaves, you can use mm -hmm. straw, um, yeah. you can use a lot of things depending on what you want to clean it. The the bedding that we use is a little more expensive, um, but it just it's a lot it, tighter. It, it's a lot tighter. It's a lot easier to use. It's like cat litter. You do we go out there with a with a, a, um, a cat, cat litter scooper and mm -hmm. just scoop the poop out into a bucket, yeah. and then there's not much um, wasted um, bedding. Yeah, and it, it's just it's uh, it's. Um, 
compressed pellets. It's the same thing that you would put in your, your uh, wood burning stove with those little tiny pellets, um, but it's, it's compressed pellets for horse bedding. So you spray it down with water, let it sit for a little bit, and then it turns into sawdust. And it's very wow. easy to just scoop it all out. It smells like pine. It's very clean. Yeah, that's the other thing. It smells like pine. So mm -hmm. it, it cuts down on any, if any, smell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for those viewers who are not in this local area, uh, which is quite a few, <laughs> um, what in general, like general type of places they would need to go to get their supplies to get started? Okay, so what, what you need to do, um, okay, first off, I guess a coop is the main thing that you need. Um, there are a lot of things that you can use for a coop. Um, you could use a small shed that you have in the back. Um, you can use a doghouse. Basically, what, what you need is you need ventilation, uh, but not drafts. If you have drafts um, coming onto your birds, like wind blowing directly on them, that'll actually make them cold, um, and then they're going to be very uncomfortable and it can make them sick. But you need ventilation because the moisture from their breath will um, build up and it, it'll actually chill them on cold nights. So you need the ventilation and you need something that's going to have a tough locking door because raccoons are very crafty. Um, people might even try and break in and take your chickens. So, I mean, like it, it's a good idea to have something that you can put a padlock on. So just something sturdy for the chickens, uh, whether it's a kennel or it's a you know little shed or what, if you build your own, whatever it is. Um, once you have that, you need to go to a farm store or a county store, um, TSC, they have locations all over the place. Usually in the city they don't have much, you, like, no. you have to go to um, mm -hmm. a feed store or a, a farm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, like if you have like a, uh, like a smaller home hardware or a smaller hardware store that's a little bit out in the county, um, you, you can always find stuff there. Um, but the best thing to do is go on yellowpages.ca and search feed store or farm supply. Um, or TSC and find the nearest one, um, and that's that's a really good way to get started on on, on the, the materials that you're going to need. And over time, you you end up meeting other people who have chickens, and they might have other like closer sources for food and for 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 bedding supplies. You had three chickens. How many eggs do those three chickens have? Because they weren't all laying at the time. Yeah. Right. Um, well, Dolce, she she's an Italian white leghorn. Um, they have the highest. Uh, feed to egg output ratio. So you can feed them the smallest amount of food and get the most amount of eggs. Um, she would lay about seven a week and they, they weren't extra large, they were jumbo. They're bigger, they, wow. they wouldn't even fit in store egg cartons, they were huge. Um, and then we had uh, we had a barred Plymouth Rock, those buttons, um, and she would lay probably about five a week and they were extra large and brown. And then uh, Buttercup, she's still a baby, so she's not laying yet, um, but she's a Polish hen. And she lays maybe four to five a week and they're about medium sized. So it just it depends on the breed. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, what are the benefits to having your own? <laughs> Eggs <laughs> right from your own backyard. What are the benefits that's, compared that's the to the That's the benefit store? right there. <laughs> yeah. I can it's walk not outside. Just that they're free and handy, I can walk outside in the morning and, and pick my egg. But the thing is, you know what's in it. You know how those chickens were treated. Yeah. You don't have to be eating these eggs and realize, you know, there's six chickens in this one foot by one foot cage. Mm -hmm. um, just being treated horribly, you know. We've got happy chickens out back. They lay happy eggs that taste great. Um, yeah. you, you know, personally, I feel bad whenever I eat um, store-bought yeah, eggs. Yeah. Um, but living in the city, you kind of have to. Um, but other than that, there's no, you know what goes into that egg. You know what goes into the food you're eating. Mm -hmm. There's no pesticides. There's no, um, no hormones. hormones. There's, there's none of that crap. There's, there's exactly what you feed your chickens, and that's it.